Welcome to Info 3, Topic 2, Systems. The role of an ICT system in an organisation is to ensure that the organisation achieves its goals and aims effectively and efficiently. Justification of ICT costs. They help to save time, for example they may use an automatic method in comparison to a manual method. They may decide to use CAD CAM to create better products and they also may use this CAD CAM to ensure that they stay in the guidelines of the just-in-time policy. Common ICT systems used in organisations. The most common is a payroll system and this calculates the wages of an employee by the numbers of hours that they work in the organisation. This is a generic package which can be tailored to suit most companies. Human resources. They store data about the people who work in the organisation and are based around powerful networks. No organisation can operate in a form of isolationism. For example, schools will also need to be in touch with exam boards such as AQA and OCR. There are also requirements of external agencies that will operate in a supply chain. For example, they may be creating a SETI. Therefore, they'll need to consider the raw material which will be processed into the required material. This will then create the manufactured product which will be sent to storage and then finally that will be delivered to the customer. A legacy system is an ICT system that does not fully replace the existing system. Management systems. This was originally used to create paper-based systems which were scanned and stored as picture files using OCR technology. It is also used to convert paper-based system, paper systems now to create those into electronic systems. Types of ICT systems and their uses. Front office is where sales and customer service takes place. Back office is where manufacturing takes place. And transaction processing uh, also takes place at an operational level. And this can include commercial transactions such as using ATMs or EPOS systems. As we mentioned before, a payroll system produces two primary outputs, the payment and the printed record. The inputs, as we mentioned before, would be the employee's ID and the number of hours worked. Another output that may also be considered in this system would be tax control. Management and information systems. They take data from internal and external sources and process it into information that can be provided to be used by managers at different levels as well as aid in decision making. Decision support systems. This is a computer based system that analyzes data to provide information to help managers make decisions. Enterprise systems. These systems are there to serve the enterprise as a whole rather than carrying out individual department tasks. Data mining is extracting useful information from the data. Customer relationship management. Customers are a very important part of a business. CRM or customer relations management ensures that businesses are able to track customer shopping habits, for example, using a Tesco club card. This is the end of topic two. Stay in tune for topic three.